Thank you very much, Squiddle. I appreciate that. Uh, welcome back, everyone, to SGDQ 2022. And this is Crash Bandicoot 2. We're going to be doing 100%, which is, you know, everything. You know, there you go. <laughs> All right, I'm about ready to start, so... Oh, I should let the intro play, actually. Here we Crash go. Bandicoot 2. Cortex strikes back. All right, in three, Press two, start. one, go. And right off the bat, I'm going to uh, disappear from talking and uh, focus, because <laughs> the beginning of this run is pretty challenging. So I'm going to let uh, my couch go on ahead. All right, so let's get the basics down. Uh, Crash can move in a couple of ways. Obviously, he can, can walk, but he can also jump, he can spin, he can crouch, he can slide, and he can do any combination of those. So what you're going to see in this uh, run, most of all, are um, spins, slight spins, but not any kind of slight spins. There's an unintended mechanic, which if you release any direction on the directional pad as you're sliding and then spin, instead of doing a standard walking speed during your spin, you're actually going to maintain all the speed from the slide. We call those neutral slide spins, or NSS, <laughs> or it could be NSJ, depending who you're talking uh, Not NSJ, wow, that's Crash 3. Uh, SNS, I think some people call it. Uh -huh. uh, depends who you speak to. Um, so yeah, that's the basics. Um, what you saw, uh, getting the red gem, there was really no really good time to mention it. <laughs> Taking the basics out was took more time than we expected. Uh, he took he got the red gem early. He got that using a um, glitched high. We'll get into more details here. But the important part is that normally to get that red gem, he would have needed to enter this same level through a secret entrance. Uh, but getting it early actually allows for more streamlined movement. We're going to circle back on that later. That is the first level done. Wow, amazing. Good. <laughs> level one. Wow. Great. Almost done. <laughs> <laughs> You'll notice levels are, from, for, the mo for most of them, relatively short. There's a few like longer ones, especially in the later home worlds, but for the most part, they're short. This is probably the longest level in Warp 1, mostly because of the fact that you need to go through it twice. As you're noticing already, uh, he's not getting boxes. Getting boxes is important in this game because it allows you to get gems. Clear gems, you can get a few ways. There are clear, clear gems just loitering around, and there are also clear gems you get by getting all the boxes. But this level is special because there is a colored gem that you get by breaking no box. So he's going to first go through this level once without breaking anything, get the blue gem, and you'll notice instead of exiting the level from there, he'll just death abuse. Conveniently, if you die in this game, it doesn't strip away any of the collectibles except for the boxes. So crystals, gems, etc., uh, are kept, and you can continue from the last checkpoint. He didn't get any checkpoints so far, so that's going to warp him right back to the start of the level, and he can continue oh, all getting right. boxes from there. Nice. Yeah, so I got the blue gem there and then took a death, which puts me back at the start of the stage. And you can see from my inventory that I do keep the gem. So you'll be seeing that in many parts of the run where I just grab something and then take a death, and that'll be it. Now we're going to do this 2D section here. As soon as I get this checkpoint, I can start playing risky. All right, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Another movement tech that's worth mentioning is zigzagging. Uh, if you alternate directions, for example, you're, you want to go up, you'll alternate diagonal up left to diagonal up right, you're actually going to get a little bit more speed compared to uh, normal speed. But that also applies to slides. Specifically, if you curl the slide in one direction, you'll get more speed throughout that slide. And if you curl it back, you can keep the slide straight. So instead of doing simple neutral slide spins, what Potty is doing on every single one of those neutral slide spins, he's going to zigzag that slide back and forth before going neutral, which is kind of tight, but it's definitely possible. And that gives him, well, I don't know the factor, but noticeably faster movement overall. And notice, like, believe me when I say, uh, this is oh, definitely it. tiresome on the hand. Oh yeah, I definitely avoided. <laughs> I definitely avoided a lot of practice because I did not want to be in like hand pain uh, for this run. So, but it's going all right so far, honestly. Like that, I, I am so glad that level's out of the way. I <laughs> level. But uh, yeah, now warp one is going to get pretty pretty interesting, honestly. So uh, 
iconic stage next, you know. It's one of the Crash Bandicoot chase levels, you know. Boulder chases you and you run away. Uh, we're going to be slightly faster than the boulder, I'd say. <laughs> a little bit faster. One thing to note here, uh, as soon as the first boulder chase will start, both of Potty's masks are going to be taken away. Actually, it's taken away as soon as he enters the level. I didn't even know. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, both, both of his masks are taken away. This is relevant because it turns out that in this game, unlike Crash 1 and Crash 3, um, the triple mask form, invincibility form, is slower than the other, no matter what you're doing. Which means he'll be avoiding triple mask form unless he can use it for um, actually taking damage and getting through sections while taking damage in right. way. So we're going to intentionally wait here because the boulder has to blow up those nitro crates because there is no other means to get them. And when they are off screen, they are deloaded. So the boulder does not get them. So we do have some manual waiting. Oh, this bonus is pretty cool. Got some zigzag here. We don't want to bounce on these, so we're just going to do this. Okay, back up. We're just going to do that. All right, back up. We're just going to do that. And... I am dead. <laughs> uh, that's fine. We'll just try again. That was so weird. Like, I've never had... No, I'm not going to say I've never had, but three different times like that. Anyways. Yeah, this game's very hard. Just, just so. Try again. All right, same oh. thing. Let's try again. All right, there, there we, we go. go. Let's go. <laughs> Get me out of here. First try. Yeah, yeah, got it. A wall boosting. Go on, Nitro. All <laughs> <laughs> right. You see the box to the right? Right, the, the boulder broke it. Uh -huh. Sometimes the boulder jumped abo jumps above it, and that's really annoying. Like, you can't really do anything about it other than kill yourself and try again, um, which is unfortunate. Uh, but thankfully, it didn't happen this time. Uh, so back to the masks thing. Um, this level order has been chosen specifically because from Turtle Woods to Crash Dash, he loses both masks. He doesn't need to worry about masks. He can then go directly to Hang 8, which gives you a mask early on. Uh, thankfully, he doesn't need to worry about that since masks are gone. This mask, the, the, the yeah, masks are basically the primary concern for level order. So you're going to see like probably suboptimal, or at least what looks at first glance to be suboptimal warp room movement, like instead of going from one level to the one to directly to its side, you if might I be could like. Button for a moment, infamous uh, checkpoint. Yeah, I got it. There yeah, you go. Hell should yeah. be good. Should be good. So that checkpoint is the only the only checkpoint in the run where if you break it in a you have to break it in a specific way. If you would, break it wrong, the game soft locks on this respawn up here. So we, the, this Fade the Black is going to be pretty suspenseful, but we should be fine. Yeah, we should be fine. So <laughs> yeah, if you break it other than South, the game will soft lock, usually at least. Yeah, yeah. But uh, as Nitroff mentioned, warp movement or routing is done to not get three masks, except with one exception okay. later on and they're on. All but good. Yeah, we did not soft lock. No Let's soft go. Lock. Yay. Very good, very good. All right, so I'm doing this bonus very fast because I'm actually going to catch, I'm going to use the speed to catch a cycle in this next section, which is like a blue gem platform, which is, you have to have the blue gem for it to be unlocked, which is why colored gems are like important to get early on, so. That's another concern for level routing. He needed to do Turtle Woods before this level because that's where he got the blue gem from. Yep. So we're going to be doing some, oh boy, <laughs> some spin bounces here. Okay, and this one. All right, so now that I'm on the jet board, I'm going to attempt to beat these mines up here and hit the switch, which would be by a mile easily. There we go. All right, head back. That Hitting that switch uh, filled in the outlined crates back here. So we just grab them like so, and then we pull diagonal against the wall to get extra speed. Uh, in the boulder chase and river levels, holding diagonal against a wall gives you way more speed. It gives you a ton of speed, so you'll be seeing me holding di holding into walls uh, often in these stages. Yeah, that's the wall boosting part you mentioned in the last level. That slide looks scary, and it really is. I always get scared when I try it in a run. It's a but... very punishing slide to fail, for sure. 
All right, so we beat this guy. This is actually God Cycle for Hang 8, which is great. It's the best cycle you can get, so there you go. So Hang 8 was extremely strong. Pretty nice. And we're already four level levels down. One more amazing. to go amazing, before amazing. the first boss. Mm -hmm. The Pits introduces backtracking. There's going to be a fork in the road. Uh, Potty will take the left side because that's where the boxes are the most scarce. Well, I gotta take the right side, then go back yeah. and take the left side. He, he'll, he'll take a, a little bit of a <laughs> back and forth, uh, take the right side twice in both directions because that's basically where the gap in the boxes is the largest, probably. And. Yeah, not much oh. else to mention here. So these big pink birds, uh, spinning, landing on them and spinning shoots you in a direction relative to like where Crash is most facing. So if you land on the back of them with a spin, they will boost you forward. Some people think this is a uh, useless uh, speed tech, but I am a I'm a bird enjoyer. Some some runners may disagree, but. <laughs> So we're going to be using this scenery up here, these mushrooms, to skip over these birds with a slide and a glitch high jump. Uh, if one of you wants to explain that, because that's a thing. <laughs> right, glitched high jump. Uh, long story short, if you spin immediately after you high jump, or even jump for that matter, you're going to get more height out of that jump than you normally would. And that's used in several places to sometimes just reach uh, longer distance, sometimes to just reach higher. It really depends on the situation, but it's a really useful speed tech, and yeah, you'll see it all over the place. Um, uh, this and bonus. <laughs> <laughs> this bonus is a bit scary. Uh, they want you to like backtrack, bounce on all the bouncy crates ten times, but we're not going to do that. So. We're gonna jump here, slide off this box, not falling into the pit. Uh, we're gonna hit this and head back because we gotta get some outline crates. So we're going to spin bounce here, slide here, glitch high around, get those, slide back. Oh, very nice, very good. Probably heard spin bounce so far a couple times. Yeah. Uh, spin bouncing is, as it sounds, just spinning on a crate, but the term is kind of misleading. We don't really bounce on it, we manually jump off it. Yep. And it breaks the crate immediately. It can be used on uh, some of those you know, vertical, vertical stripe crates. Those are usually like you need to bounce on them 10 times to get lump of fruits out of them uh, to break them immediately. Or it can be used on TNTs to make them explode, explode immediately while still exiting the blast area before it reaches you. All right. First boss, Ripperoo, it's like a 100-second auto-scroller, so great time for donations. If we have any, I'm sure we have a lot. Oh, we definitely have some donations here. I have a $25, donation, $25 donation from Drake Endrit that says, putting down during a game from one of my favorite PS1 series. Good to see Crash Bandicoot 2 at SGDQ. Crystal gems and all those beautiful boxes, yet the only thing we don't get, Coco's new batteries. Got a donation from Corey for $25 that says, Very excited for the Crash speedrun. I played this game every weekend when I was a kid with my dad before he passed away, so it holds a very special place in my heart. Our condolences. I've got a donation from Craigle Bagel for $15 that says, All the best, Potty. Absolute legend. Great to see you doing what you've worked so hard for. Thanks, Craig. got a $25 donation from SD Bestie that says, Crash 2 is one of the first games I ever played, and it has a special place in my heart. SGDQ is the best time of the year, and I'm glad it's back. Also, hi, Nam Mai. All right, so there's the first warp room. The astute among you might have noticed before the run started that there was a language selection option in the main menu. We are, in fact, running this game on the PAL version. Uh, despite having slightly slower loads, it has significantly faster movement, which more than makes up for the difference. Um, and one of the other differences it has is, well, it affects the polar bear here, and it makes some of those boxes much harder to get. Hopefully it won't be a problem here. Oh, surely not, surely not. 
Yeah, it will be fine. So the main form of movement in this level, as you can see, is charging and instantly jumping. I believe each charge jump saves like 0.3 seconds, so that's pretty useful. Yep. But other than that, nothing is happening in this level. Yeah, we can have some more donations, honestly, for this stage. It's pretty much settled. <laughs> Yeah, sure thing. I've got a $25 donation from King Moose that says, Played so much Crash Bandicoot growing up. Such a wonderfully frustrating game to 100%. Now to see it done so effortlessly is incredible. Good luck to Potty and keep on speening on. Thank you. I've got a $100 donation from Sandra D. Rippus that says, Happy to see the Crash Bandicoot 2 speedrun. One of my favorites. Good luck and stay safe, everyone. All right, got the got the hard boxes. We're good. <laughs> Trust me, that deserves an applause. <laughs> oh yeah, it is so easy to lose twenty seconds to that. Uh huh. That's like, that's the classic. You get out of the first warp room and then fail that, and then you're back where you belong. It's like <laughs> glad to have gotten that for sure. Okay, so Crash Crush, second chase level. We'll be seeing wall boosting again and waiting on Nitro or something too much. Nice little hole skip here, and then using wall boosting, we can just skip over this entire hole just by holding diagonal, which is nice. Another wall boost here over this pit. Very good. So this level has electric fences. Uh, a lot of them just ignore you if you slide spin through them. Like, you'd think since you... Spinning makes your hitbox way bigger in this game, but the electric fences kind of just don't care, so you can just kind of go through them. It's pretty nice. And some, of, some of them are picky, though. Some of them kill you regardless. Yeah, annoyingly enough, there's a few that don't work the same. Yeah. Story of this game, basically. <laughs> so there's two sections in a row here where we have to once again wait on nitros, but we go as far ahead as we can and then pan the camera backwards so they're all on screen and then they explode and we go in. So number one rule in this game, if it doesn't if you don't see it, it doesn't happen. Except when you activate TNTs yourself. Yes. <laughs> so we wait and then we go. <laughs> and we approach the bonus here. There's actually a secret area underneath where I am currently. If you walk to the left, I died. Oh. But uh <laughs> Um, people don't know about that. There's like a secret area below here that has like an extra life and whatnot. This is pretty cool. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to extend my slide here and break all of those boxes at once. And then hopefully wrap around here and get this stick. Nope, which I, it's fine. <laughs> That's like a very minor thing. So out of this bonus, I have to hold down. It's, it is like a very strange oddity in this game, but if you do not hold the down direction, at leaving that bonus, the walls will deload in the stage. <laughs> so you can just walk through the walls and die. So you have to, if you're gonna wall boost, you have to deload them. So, oh, look a body slam great. Oh my gosh, that was the first one, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Hopefully that was also you the first body the slam. Pits. <laughs> oh, the pits. Yeah, yeah. it's oh. fine. <laughs> There are certain boxes, the blue ones with the X across them, that are blue and red, and uh, they can only be broken with a body slam. Yeah, we'll be seeing more on this level, actually. Yep. This level blew my mind as a kid uh, when I found out the secret. <laughs> Absolutely, because this, like, this entire idea never came to me. Yeah. You'll see it soon enough. <laughs> This is Eel Deal, it's the first sewer level. The best music, by the way. Uh, just like Snow Go and Turtle Woods, it also has a colored gem, which we should see soon enough. Like, you can just go through that wall, that's crazy. <laughs> Believe it or not, that's intended. Yeah. That's just the secret. You just walk through a solid wall. And I also deloaded the water yeah. here so I can avoid the electricity. The electricity just doesn't happen, even though the eel, like, zaps. The electricity's gone because we deloaded the water there, so it's pretty. Pretty cool. <laughs> okay, that's fun. Nice use of mask there. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, I don't get to do the the thing you're the ink, so I lost my mask. That's okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so normally, uh, start of this bonus, they want you to wait on this bridge to be built. Well, we can just do that. So see you later. <laughs> Spin these because we do not want to bonk on them ten times each, and we're out. So, there we go. This level is uh, 
my rival in PB attempts. It is very challenging for, for me in particular, I suppose, but it's just a lot of precise movement and managing your hitbox, basically. I'm going for it. Oh, Ooh, Oof, that's nice. okay, okay. Another version difference between NTSC and PAL is NTSC has pitifully small body slam hitbox. You need like four body slams to break all of that. Hal just breaks them in two. Oh no, the switch. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> this switch is so evil. It's so hard to hit it. It's got, it's really picky, but it's not a big deal. It's a very small death, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Life goes on. Oh, can I beat this guy? Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Normally, if you had a mask here, you could like skip the end portion of those monkey bars, but it's okay. We can just do this, see you later, and then uh, we're out. So we're good. Very nice. There's the old deal. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I need to nail this level because it's so cool. Got to nail some of this. <laughs> I'm going to dial in for this one. You guys talk about whatever. <laughs> Yeah, so this is the second snow level, the red jump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just don't bounce on boxes. Yeah, if you land on like the very edge, he'll just walk. He just ignores the concept of bouncing. That, I had a feeling that was going to happen, but I just tried anyways. No slide. Okay, this is fine. I mean, I'm nailing it, by the way, just so we're clear. I mean, the cool part isn't here yet anyway. Yeah, yeah. I can't even get to the goal part, like... <laughs> okay, this time for sure, trust the process. Fingers crossed. Uh -huh. Okay, I got my slide that time, so we're good. Let's go! Okay, so the cool part is coming up, this <laughs> elevator right here. This red gem section, uh, if you're familiar with this game, you, you know this part's hard. Like, you know, it's, it's a very long, arduous section, but hopefully I can just make it look easy if all goes well. Here, getting the red gem early is where this shines. You wouldn't be able to uh, do snow go before air crash otherwise. A little bit of a flub there, but that's okay. Okay, okay, don't panic. It's fine. <laughs> Sometimes, if you don't zigzag hard enough there, you do not reach that part. That hit me. Okay, it's fine. It no. I don't know. <laughs> It's a bit bumpy, but we're doing okay. We're doing fine. So we're actually gonna jump around these boxes here, spin them both, which I zigzag break these without bonking off them, so we break them right away. I gotta listen to these. And we're gonna do a big slide here into a big glitch eye, and then we're out. Okay. <laughs> We're not out of the woods Be yet. Better There's... than I thought. We still need to hit the checkpoint. Yeah, we gotta get to the check. Surely I will not die. I waited, so we're fine. This is a cool little section here. Bounce, bounce. Land with a spin so you can slide off it. Very cool, very fast. Hey! Okay, we're safe. Checkpoint, let's go. Oh, I can go. Break those boxes. They're like hidden behind the wall, kind of. You can see them. Come on, you saw them. You saw them. Slide into the bonus. Glitch high break this box. Slide off this. Which I hear break that box. It's actually kind of hard to do. Slide back. Oh, beautiful. This is like bizarre. <laughs> Spin these, slide back, slide back, slide back. <laughs> oh, there you go. That bonus was amazing. I'm disappointed it, it, you didn't go for the 3D range. Oh, yeah. Don't even mention it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are in the final section of this stage. It's, well, it's a pretty sizable stage. Gonna grab the crystal, skip here. Very nice. Yeah, some holes you can just skip with a slide. Mm -hmm. Especially, like, I I'm pretty sure it wouldn't be possible for all of them in NTSC, but Hal just has so much speed, you can just... Yeah, you don't even need to worry about it. Yeah. That beginning was rocky, but I got the part that mattered, so that's fine. I'm gonna have to win. <laughs> well, we take those. Yeah, yeah. All right. This is the only level in the game we do twice. There's, this is the only revisit, and that's because there's a secret entrance that hides boxes, and we cannot access it until later. Yeah, we'll also be running into a death round. First one in the run, I believe. Uh -huh. So there's a death route and a secret exit, meaning he will skip the upcoming checkpoint to get into the death route. 
get the jam, and then death abuse, get back, which he will hopefully pull off swimmingly. Oh yeah. So yeah, I guess one thing that's worth mentioning is you don't even need to exit the, ner the, the level in like the standard way for something like a crystal here to count. Um, conveniently, even if you exit through a secret exit, uh, you can get crystal. And another thing worth mentioning, he needs all the secret exit. They all count for percentage, even if they don't give you a gem or anything. Okay, it's Very fine. Nice. Big, big boy jump, big boy jump, big boy jump. <laughs> that, uh, if, I, if I die there, that loses like minute or so like 50 or something like based on what I was gonna do so I'm very glad I did not die there all right now we're gonna do the Swagmaster 420 uh this trick was named in 2014 I was uh how old was I I was 12 years old when that trick was named so that's pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna we died there and we're gonna take the secret exit here and there you go amazing the way secret exit works they take you to a secret warp room and each secret exit opens up a specific level in that secret warp room in this case that secret warp is uh the secret entrance to snowgo and if you remember correctly uh, at the first level we entered we got the red gem in snowgo so we don't need to do anything here we just enter it to exit back yep that is warp two done except for the boss fight which is the komodo brothers and you just want to minimize the amount of time. Like Komodo, Komodo Mo will spin Joe around, and when he's done spinning, you can attack him and deal damage. So you want to minimize that by manipulating him. It's very like simple. It's basically an auto scroller, so we can have some more donations in the meantime. Yeah, sure thing. I've got a $10 donation from Reichser that says, "Best of luck to Nitroff, Mohoff, Potty, and Andy from everyone in the Crash community. Thank you." Thanks, Reichser. Why would you encourage Andy? <laughs> I've got a $25 donation from Supersphere that says, It's great to see Crash 2 back at GDQ, the game that got me into speedrunning. Best of luck, Potty. You're gonna rock it. Before someone think I'm rude, um, it's basically a meme at this point that Andy, Andy Gavin, the lead developer for this game, is basically trying to mess with us all the time. <laughs> all the flaws are on his behalf in our minds. His we love we love your game, Andy. Yes. But uh, yeah, <laughs> and that is the uh, Komodo Brothers. We are on to the third warp room. Very nice. Oh, the best warp room, by the way. Very excited. All right, plant food is the final river level. We're going to do air crash again later, but this is like the third and final river level in the game. And it features the gold gem, which is set on a timer. There's going to be a timer in the bottom right, and I need to get to the end of the stage before it finishes. I don't know if I can do it. We'll try our best. Hopefully we can make it. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Worst case, there's a safe threat. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they actually give us so much time that we can go do the bonus, uh, the bonus round, and still make it. So we'll try that TNT without taking damage. Very good, and we can do this entire bonus and still make it. So <laughs> they're pretty, pretty reasonable with that. Nice bonus. Clean. take damage intentionally here to get an extra boost and we're going to grab the checkpoint that I, mean, I also need to mention the timer is this is not visible but it's still active so we can still grab the yellow gem at the end regardless for some reason the timer disappears at the end of the bonus but it is still going so you can just grab it and take a death and then once we respawn we can get the rest of the boxes Worth noting, even if you, even if you can get all the gems, uh, all the boxes, and still get the gem at the end, I don't know if you actually can. You can I think Tass can, but yeah, uh, only one of the gems is gonna spawn, and you'll need to die to get the other gem to spawn anyway. So. Yeah, sure. This is as fast as we can do it. All right, pretty standard plant food, and now we get to the the three good levels, the good levels. <laughs> my some of my favorites, anyways. So we have Road to Ruin coming up, which uh, 
if you've played before and you've beaten the game, you know, has a secret entrance to get the, all the boxes. They hit some boxes in like a secret entrance, like Air Crash does, for example. But we can actually get there without needing the entrance. So we're going to jump on this scenery over here that has collision, and then skip this flame, get over to these nitros, and light this TNT and die. I did not die. <laughs> I'll just wait, whatever. So yeah, we get those boxes. We're not supposed to, but we're gonna go get them early anyways. To be clear, dying was not the intended strat. It was just what Potty was expecting at that moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was... Not dying know. is the optimal <laughs> <way>. <laughs> So here's a death row platform. Uh, we're gonna leave it alone because we don't need it. Because <laughs> they decided to put the gem right over there. And uh, I died. Oh. I might have embedded. I was scared. That might have not worked. <laughs> but we can just grab it. So hopefully I can do that. Which side of the left with good zigzagging yeah, gets you all the way there? Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Great. All right. Yeah. Now we just have the bonus left here. Uh, it's like made to be a puzzle, but you can just skip the whole thing with the glitch eyes. So we can actually have donations here because this is a pretty slow bonus. Look how slow it's going, you know. <laughs> sure thing. I've got a $20 donation from Silver. Best of luck on the run, Potty. Just wanted to thank you for doing this. Entertaining us, we really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> no problem, man. Uh, thanks, Silver. I've got a $10 uh, donation from Bad Luck Tulip that says, I've never seen a Bandicoot move so fast. This run is next level. All right, so we're done with the bonus. See, that was very, very cool. All right, so now we just light these TNTs, uh, blow up the nitros with this detonator, and we're out. So that was, that was okay. I probably lost like, not too much, that was fine. So I mean, yeah, You, you didn't die, so we take those. I did die. You did? Oh. Second try. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. it's midnight. So no, you're close. good. You're good. No, I am exhausted. This is, I'm All so right. tired. <laughs> All right. Sewer later. Second sewer level. Uh, this level has a lot of levels are like, move fast, you'll do well. This level is like, do a trick, do a trick, do a trick, do a trick, because it has these lab assistants with uh, flamethrowers. And they have, it's like the most overpowered hitbox. Like, it's pretty hard to dodge. Hopefully we will be dodging some of them, but yeah. <laughs> this is the yellow gem section here. Uh, for some reason, they put gems early in sections. Um, maybe they didn't think we would just die as soon as we get them, but we can just grab the gem, die, and the, the whole section is like nullified. We don't have to do it. So we respawn here, and we're going to try and skip this assistance. Which we do, no damage, very good. I can go for a strat in the bonus now. Yeah, I hope I do it, because it's sick. <laughs> it's really it's cool. Strat. Hopefully I can do it, we'll see. It's so flashy. It's very And very fast. Good. Yeah. Great. Oh, oh. Not quite, not quite, but you get the idea. Ideally, you hit the switch and get hit by the nitro, so you get all the boxes right away. But that's okay, that only loses like three seconds, so that's not a big deal, regardless. So now we're going to go for three blade, which is just jumping through the blades without taking a hit. Okay, there you go. And now two blade, which is three blades a little bit other. There we go. Got it. <laughs> now that we have two masks, we can do this. And hopefully we can get a forward boost off this assistant. We're going to slide under him. Yeah, there we go. That's nice. perfect. Okay. And now with our one last mask, there are two assistants left in the stage. So now I'm going to attempt to skip the first one here. Ah, not quite, not quite. That's fine. So if you skip him without getting hit, you can just damage on this guy, beat the level. But we'll just wait, because we have to. That's fine. So there's sewer later. See you later. <laughs> and uh, time for the nightmare stage. <laughs> just like visually. Like as a, as a kid, this level, I'm sure this level scared like a bunch of people. You know, giant, it's like, it's another chase level, but there's no boulder. Instead, there's a giant polar bear. So, it's great. Hopefully I can uh, show off how cool it is, because it's a great level. Sadly, this bear does not move very quickly, so we can just uh, make him eat our dust, which is tragic, but see you later. It <laughs> was quickly enough to get those nitros. 
Wait, no, there's a nitro detonator. There's a detonator. Yeah, yeah. that's why. Yeah, you got it. Oh. All right. So we are approaching. Oh, okay, so oh. yeah. <laughs> that was, was D-pad. We're fine. Uh, so we're approaching a secret uh, section of this stage, which is pretty well hinted, but we're just going to, like, destroy the immersion of it and just die because normally we'd have to wait for this polar bear to destroy the bridge, but we can just grab this checkpoint, die, and then the bridge is broken. So Yeah, those three remaining plan planks are the hints that there's a secret section there. <laughs> Whoop. Oh. I honestly didn't find that as a kid. <laughs> so this is one of my favorite sections in the run, uh, the upcoming here. I'll try and like play by play it, but it's gonna be very fast. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. See how it goes. So we spin this guy, bounce off the checkpoint, bounce off the mask, break these, slide around here, all the way around. Slide jump here, do a glitch high, bonk on that box, hit that bullet. Spin this guy, slide jump here, and then we are going to Grab this mask, slide into that bullet, and go through the nitros, and we're out. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so that this bonus, we just skip the entire point of it, and we're, we're already out. Like we use a mask to get those nitro, we're, we're gone. Like that bonus is like blink and you'll miss it. You know? Yeah, going back into the chase section with that mask would have it taken away anyway, so I may as well utilize it. Yep. Alright, so we are going to get to the final part of this stage, which has uh, polar polars here. Oh my gosh, surely there won't be more polar. Uh, <laughs> there's like a cute little chase scene here with the big bear and you're on the little bear, it's nice. So It's pretty simple, I'll be honest. And, uh, just gonna mosey on through, honestly. So there you go. Uh, this level does have a secret exit, as if there wasn't enough secrets in it already. <laughs> so the, the way they want you to figure it out is uh, in the boulder stages, the boulder blocks the exit of the stage, so you can't leave, but the bear does not. So you, if you leave and explore, you'll find Polar, and there's a secret there, so. Uh, this is this is the bear portion of the run. We had some fun with some bears. There's two more bear levels in a row coming up, so we can have some donos now for sure. Sure thing. I've got a $5 donation from Cole24. Crash Bandicoot 2 on PS1 was the first game I ever bought for myself, and I spent an hour at a time between school and dinner trying to get as far as I could from the start until I saved up from for a memory card. It's probably the reason I enjoy GDQ and speedrunning so much today. Best of luck to Potty. Woo! I've got a $5 donation from Nova that says, Love you, Potty. I'm so proud of you and the hard work, it, hard work it took to get you here. This is the first GDQ I'm watching on my own without Potty showing me directly. <laughs> so far, it's been so entertaining. So glad to support a good cause, too. Good luck on the rest of your run. Hey, thanks. I've got a $10 donation from Tall Dave that says, thank you for an amazing event and for raising money for an amazing cause. Loving all the runs. One out of two bears, we can keep donations going. <laughs> Should I elaborate on this bear? I don't know. This bear level's kind of... It's a bit complicated, I suppose. There's just particular spacings that you want to do with your charge jumps. It's like, you know, it's bear stuff. Like, you know. <laughs> Some vehicles in this game are a bit simple. Uh, I can't... I, I'm not saying that like I do this level perfectly or anything, but... Pretty basic stuff here. So we instant charge, extend this charge underneath these guys, and then jump late to avoid hitting the obstacle there. Charge near this DMT, but not quite getting hit. Because... Hey, you can kill seals with a charge, by the way. A lot of people don't know that. You can charge into seals, and it actually kills them. I did not know that for, like, 
so many years, but there you go, it's a little fun fact. Pretty standard bear down. That's exactly what you what you want right there. <laughs> oh my gosh! Look at those platforms that I flew over. Surely that's not a secret, right? Surely not. See, so yeah, that's a, that's probably the most obvious. Like I'm sure that's what most people found. Uh, and it actually gives us access to the secret entrance to air crash, so we can actually get all the boxes this time. I'll try and focus on this level. If you guys have anything to say, go on. Buddy mentioned earlier, this is the only level we'll be uh, actually playing through twice. There's, we technically enter Snowgo twice in uh, another level, but this is the only one where we actually need to play it again because there were boxes in that secret section, which means there was no way for us to come back. Well, the, and that there was no way to get to that secret section from the back. Right. They also hide the nitro detonator in that section, so you can't get any nitro crates without going there as well. So it's just a necessary, inaccessible area at first, but we get there and whatever. Re revisiting only one stage in the whole game is very nice. Uh, I'm a fan. All right, so we just did some like crazy jetboard movement there, and I didn't really acknowledge it. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This bonus, I gotta be fast here. I gotta get it like perfect to make a cycle coming up. Spin bounce here, get all the way to the right and do a body slam. This is the most annoying bonus in the game, in my opinion. <laughs> oh yeah. What do you mean? I just did it perfectly. Like, come on. <laughs> all right, so I should be able to make these pillars coming up here, and they, they should like barely go down as I jump off them. These guys right here. So I'll jump off them. Okay. I had a, I had a bit of loot. <laughs> barely go down. We didn't even see it. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna use a mask here to propel myself up to these boxes and without having to go get them on foot. That's an amazing cycle. Yeah, it's, it's really good. This is like, this is like a, it's probably like a 202 air crash. Yeah, that's clean. Kind of nailed it, I'm not gonna lie. The best as I've ever seen, to be honest. Oh, come oh, on. Come okay. On. I ruined it. No. <laughs> All right, so that is the end of Warp 3. Now we will go to fight Tiny. And he's a very basic boss. There's nothing to him, really. It's just there's nine platforms. So he jumps where you jump. Some of them blink and then fall. You want him to jump over a falling platform, and it damages him. The only optimization is if you wait for one jump on the first and second cycle, which unfortunately that was, yeah. we didn't get here, uh, he still rays at the same time, and the jump count still goes up, so it takes one fewer jump on the next phase to get him to fall. Without costing him. Okay. Yeah, we got it that time. Good luck. All right, so this final part is reactionary. I have to stand on this top middle part and react to whatever blinks and hopefully not die. Okay, right, I got it, okay. Look at that reaction time, amazing. Oh, I can do it, oh, I can do it. Nice, <laughs> I should do it, let me do it, hold on. Swag. There we go, okay. Got the air dance, amazing. Uh, Warp Room 4, a.k.a. Uh, 18 Minutes of Pain. <laughs> These are some of the longest and most difficult stages. Basically all of them. I, I, let me just get in there first. Uh, starting off with the Ruination. Uh, this level... This level's neat. I don't know, it's cool. I guess. Jump over that flame. Break those. The green gem we got from ELD will play a role here, I guess. Even though we do not need it, actually. Oh, right, right. <laughs> it's intended that you bring the green gem here so you can access... Oh, I don't have to hit that switch, by the way, because those spawn nitros, and nitros don't matter here. So I'm going to spin this checkpoint and take a death. I'll be honest, I completely ignored the left side of that, and I forgot what was necessary to get here. It's not <laughs> natural to me that he just needed to jump there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to go on this scenery, which is... Uh, I guess it's intended. I don't know. It has collision, so... 
just gonna kind of cheese this section. They want you to like, you know, time your jumps over the logs, which uh, it's kind of kind of ruined whenever you realize you can just spin the logs. Uh, believe me, boot up the game and do it. You can spin the logs. That it's ruins your uh, ruins your <laughs> outlook on it. Yeah, that was good. That was good. That was good. Uh, it should be mentioned that him dying right after the checkpoint was intentional to reset the cycles in that section so he would know where everything is, from logs to flames. Definitely gives us an advantage. Yeah. Okay. Oh. That happened in practice. <laughs> <laughs> this body slamming, come on. Uh, we can have some donations during this bonus. It's like, uh, it's a bit lengthy. We can have some. Yeah, absolutely. I have $50 from Landon that says, staying up late to play Crash Bandicoot? Reminds me of my childhood. I've got a $50 donation from Mishnu that says, hey, JDQ, hope this year goes amazing, just like the runs we've seen so far. First donation this marathon, can't wait to give, give, give. Okay, okay, we're out. Good. Yeah, that box was a little scary there. <laughs> yeah. Didn't go perfectly, but that's fine. All right, so we need to leave this level with two masks. I actually didn't think about it. Should I should I reroute if I don't have two masks here? You can do a cold hodge crash instead. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. I'll do that. That's fine. So we want to leave this stage with two masks because it's the only. The next stage has the only invincibility that we want in the game. Did not panic there, by the way, for sure. Also, depth perception Ooh. in this game is really bad, especially here. You just gotta trust that you know where things are. Oh, I know are. where things are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have our second mask. We should be able to exit with both, hopefully. Okay, we're out. Right. Okay, there we go. Ruination. Not, nice, not bad. Nice. Not bad. Oh, okay. There's two ways to use the mask in the next level. You can either damage boost through that monkey bar section or you can just use the mask through it because I didn't mention earlier but there's one movement that is faster with the mask and it's monkey bar movement. But Potty is going to use the damage boost so you don't get to see it. This is the final sewer level. It is also by far the worst one. That is just blatant facts unfortunately. Uh, a lot of, you know, it's called hanging out so there's a lot of monkey bars, it's just how it's designed. So we're gonna, this just shows off how slow the monkey bars are, you know, we're just trudging along, but soon we will get to our third mask and we will see how much better that is. <laughs> uh, what is this? Just wait. Could have made it, but safety is better. Yeah, yeah. Because now I can do this. Uh, you actually do want to walk with the triple mask because your movement is nerfed substantially, which is why it's bad. But we can do this. <laughs> I, I knew that was going to happen. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, he's opting to damage abuse as he can zigzag, so boosting his speed right there. Can you show off speed crawling? Oh. Oh. Uh, no. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, for some reason, crawling is... Uh, the fastest thing you can do when you when you have invincibility. You just go really fast when you're crawling, which is very counterproductive, but okay. Uh, I'm actually very nervous about this bonus because of being on a different setup, but we will try. It has five spin... Oh, that's... Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Was that two no bounces in a row? Well, maybe. So yeah, I landed on that arrow, and it just didn't work, so uh, unfortunately I ran into the nitro. Which is fine. I'm more I'm scared of the very end. There are five bouncy crates in a row, so you have to perform five spin bounces, which normally isn't too bad, but there's a bit different input uh, latency on this setup, so I'm a bit scared. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I gotta be a bit later on it than I used to. We'll get out, I promise. It'll happen. This is like new runners, this is like the worst bonus in the game. But then, like, people like me, it's like, this bonus is fine. It's literally, like, inconsequential, but... Uh, hopefully one of these times I'll get out. Okay, there you go. Round of applause. First try. That was less tries than I was anticipating, so <laughs> we'll take it. This level does also we'll have a secret exit, so he will be death abusing after driving the jump. Yep. 
grab the gem, take a swim, I might get electrocuted. I don't know. Oh, I died. I'm lucky. So yeah, we respawn here, and we can actually go back here, which leads to the secret section. And it, it uh, introduces a mechanic that's only used here in this game for some reason, which is pressing circle to pull your feet up, which avoids these enemies. I don't know why it's only here, but it is, so there you go. You actually can just spin the enemies, and mm -hmm. that gives you invincibility, so yeah. Fun yeah. fact. Pulling the feet up is something they kept in Crash 3, but it's never used in Crash 3. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're going to enter Totally Fly here, but we are going to immediately exit because it's going to spit us out of the Hanging Out entrance, and we're going to do Digging It next instead. Digging It is uh, by far the worst level in the game, so that's cool. <laughs> it's like four minutes long. It's an RNG fest. Uh, but it's got some really cool stuff, so, you know, we'll do it, I guess. I guess I'll play it. We could have some, we have a couple of donations for the start of the stage, if you have any. Yeah, sure. Uh, we've got a donation from Freeze Champ for $5 that says, Hey, Potty, best of luck. I've loved watching you improve so much so quickly, and I know you'll keep going. Keep it up. We got a $50 donation from Batera that says, looking forward to watching with everyone back together again. Skip this fence here. They just, you can just squeeze on by, so there you go. See that Tiki where he moves his RNG, where the plants spit his RNG, they're explosive uh, seeds. So there's a lot of stuff that can definitely uh, screw you over. But uh, you, know, you may notice that I broke the checkpoint before I entered the bonus. Uh, if you break the checkpoint while the box tally is going down, it won't count. <laughs> so you'll get to the end of the stage and have one less box, and you'll be like, what happened? But yeah, you got to break the checkpoint before entering the bonus. So there's a death route platform here. We're going to uh, skip it by doing this. See you later, and we're in the section. <laughs> the way back is very difficult, so hopefully I can hit it. That'd be very cool. Land here, glitch high here, land on that branch. Okay, I got it. There right. you go. Well done. We don't now get the checkpoint. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is the worst section in the game, and I uh, nailed it, so that's good. <laughs> that section has definitely resulted in many angry sessions for me. <laughs> but hey, nailing it right now is pretty good. There's technically a way to do this level faster with a box dupe, but it has a significant setup time and it's not 100% consistent. Thanks to Andy, uh, who decided <laughs> to implement some, <laughs> um, some RNG into the death animation, and sometimes uh, the death animation takes longer. The way box duping works, we're going to see it in action in the next level, uh, well, two levels from now, called Hard Crash, uh, is if you death abuse while the box count is going up after a bonus, the box count is not going to reset, and you're going to spawn back at the checkpoint with the box count before you died. Um, but the, basically, the box count ticking up is basically just a little longer than the minimum amount of time you can take to death abuse after the bonus, which makes that inconsistent, especially if you get the shoes during the death. Alright, time to... This level has a secret exit, so we have to die. Uh, rest in peace. R.I.P. <laughs> uh, this plant is in a suspicious location, so we will just body slam him, and there's a secret exit here. So I will take that dig in it. That was completely fine. I will take that. That was actually good. So, <laughs> so now we are actually going to go do Totally Fly for real. Uh, it's basically like... Turtle Woods and the Pits, except it's dark and you have to use fireflies to traverse, but that's, you know, we don't need those. We don't need the flies. Sometimes. I need like 60% of the flies. <laughs> We're going to be using the scenery uh, again a little bit to land earlier and get some slides off. It's a little faster than waiting for the jump to go all the way to ground floor, ground level. Oh, boy. oh wow. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Let's see, I'm gonna use. Never mind. <laughs> uh, the game decides for me, it's fine. So, yeah, these, uh, these little UFO guys with the lights, they actually are a big source of lag along with the dim level presentation. So, these, there's two dark levels in the game that are on foot and they are very laggy, which is 
can result in some inconsistencies. I'm gonna do this bonus in the dark, break these boxes. I missed one behind me, I see it. Thank you, Firefly. Two here, and then we leave. Very nice. You know, okay, okay. okay. Just standard stuff. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. All right, so up here is a very infamous section. Uh, the devs were just, they were they were out for blood when they made this part. They give you a Firefly and then a bunch of body slam crates and they made it purposefully last. Uh, you spend so much time breaking the crates that you're just left in darkness, which is just cruel. It's so cruel, but uh, you know, I can see in the dark, so there you go. <laughs> There's totally fly. It has no crystal because it is a secret stage. Uh, they don't. They do not have crystals. They just have a box gem. So, coming up, cold hard crash. As I mentioned, there's going to be a box dupe here, but we're going to do quite a lot of boxes. Yeah. Uh, there's a whole like secret path and a lot of boxes in it. And like in order to get all the boxes, you need to go to the death route and then back and then. Basically, this is going to look very unorthodox to how you probably did it uh, in your playthroughs. <laughs> so I apologize if you wanted to see me do Cold Heart Crash the way that you would imagine, but... An infamously annoying level to yeah. 100%. The speedrun makes it just bearable. So we're going to avoid checkpoints uh, completely up until the bonus stage. So we're going to mosey on over to the... Death route here. There you go. So landing on the death route makes it so if we die, it stays spawned in. It doesn't disappear. So we're going to go on that. We're breaking a lot of boxes because we're going to backtrack to the bonus. And once we die after leaving the bonus, the boxes will duplicate on respawn. So we will have enough to avoid backtracking later. Which sounds counterintuitive since we're going to be going back to the start of the level, but it's it's faster. So. It's all good. It's technically slower for Tass, but barely. I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we take a death there, and our box tally is 72. So we have 72 boxes, even though all the boxes in the level are respawned. Penguin snipe there to get all four of those. Two out of two. Well done. Very good, very good. Once he breaks the upcoming checkpoint, we'll be good to go. Yep. No re-entries if we just grab this check, which we will absolutely do. It's the moment he grabs that checkpoint, the box count got saved, and no, there's no more rest. So we do need exactly 155 boxes out of this stage. If you get too many, then you do not get the gem, so we have to get exactly that amount. But it lines up pretty well to accomplish that with a uh, little struggle. So there's, a big, there's basically three extra boxes at this point, considering how many we got so far. So we'll be skipping two in here and one at the end. Yeah, this is everyone's favorite section. Come on, you love it. So we're going to stay near the bottom part and just range around everything. Um, we're going to use a mask on these nitro to keep the upcoming pressure up because when you are in invulnerability, cycles stay out of the way. More scenery of use. Full skip here, we're going to slide these TNTs instead of bouncing on them. Break these, then get around here. I can make a cycle here if I nail the ending. Grab this, so we have 155 right now. With time to spare. Nice. Good Absolutely job. amazing cold hard crash there. Yeah. Crazy good. All right, final Warp 4 set. We're still in Warp 4, by the way. Just want to point that out. We're still here. 18 minutes of pain. Yeah, so... Behaving is the uh, final stage in the Warp Room. Uh, it's just got a lot of bees in it, but it's got some secret stuff, too, so we'll be seeing that for sure. There's a funny glitch that can happen if you uh, aren't doing the movement just right. It's, uh, we call it Bee Box. Mm -hmm. You just get hit while breaking a box because bees are spawning at the same time. Yeah, if a bee spawns on the same frame that you either slide or bounce on a box, it, the box will kill you. <laughs> so it's, people are oh, people are very confused uh, when they see that for the first time. If it happens, you'll just spin a box and uh, crash dies. So, oh no, oh I'm panicking. Oh, geez. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Normally you're supposed to run through the nitro and break everything, but I got hit a bit prematurely, so I didn't really know what to do. Unfortunately, that's okay. We can do like an alternate strat here. 
which is just which high this stack, I'll land these with a spin, there you go. So, you know, back up for no mask. Unlike in the beginning, the TTs in this level are consistent. Yes. It's like they just made an effort to make digging it as annoying as possible. It's like, oh yeah, the guys here are consistent, but in digging it, they're RNG. Like, okay. Look at that suspicious nitro formation. I kind of want doesn't kind of want to punch it. <laughs> Let's just get a checkpoint first. Oh yeah, of course, of course. Just in case. <laughs> So yeah, uh, those Nitro do not make noise and they do not bounce, so that is a hint that there is a secret on top, and they are built like a staircase leading to the purple gem. This is the purple gem section. Say goodbye, it is gone forever. Um, they put it right at the start, so you can just grab the gem and leave. I really appreciate that, because that section is terrible. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to once again range around some Nitro. Oh, I did the wrong button there completely. That's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna range around here to bounce here early. This oh, part. Geez. Wow. This part is <laughs> oh, oh, <no>. wow. <laughs> Some horrible RNG. So, yeah, the nitros can bounce and the boxes can go really high. I've seen. You could, there's clips of people dying because the nitro just goes to space. Like, there's nothing you can do. It's not common, though, so. We got some action at least. Alright, so this end part's like a mad sprint to beat these bees. They want you to like dig it down and whatnot, but if you are fast enough, you can trigger the nitro, slide jump over all the explosions, and get out without waiting. So there you go. There is behaving. Uh, end of warp four. We just had the boss now. I would say this is like a time for donuts, but well, we could, I guess. There is some technical stuff. There, there is, there is. Yeah. But I just don't know where else we could like fit some. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it on the spot. The short version is you can break both targets at the same time as long as you know the engine is doing an action. Right. Where you were using that. Uh -huh. Time for donations. Yeah, do some donations. Okay, I can do a couple. I've got a $20 donation from Benny that says it's the most wonderful time of the year. That was great. Oh. I've also got a $50 donation from Keegan that says, looking forward to a week of being unproductive at work. SGDQ hoi. I've also got a $50 donation from Hama on Overdrive that says, marvelous. Okay, one Very cycle nice. less. Made a perfect engine, by the way. Yeah. So he got double arms and double uh, shoulders, both keeping one animation each. And also health refills. Yeah. All right, time for uh, the gauntlet. These next three stages are extremely difficult, and uh, one of them has a frame-perfect trick. One of them, you cannot die at all until the death route has been collected, and the other one is just terrible. So, you know. This is a level where you cannot die until the death route, and it's very long and arduous. So hopefully I can nail it. We will try and stay on cycle. Hopefully we can keep it going. Yeah, so if he consistently does the same movement, he should have the same cycle every time, hopefully. Meaning he knows where everything is, from enemies to pistons. Like, thankfully, everything in the level is, like, on the same on the same uh, rhythm, on the same cycle. So if he starts the level, he can just wait a little bit to get a, a cycle he knows and then do the rest of the level. And he, he can be con confident that he'll get the same result every time. Exactly. The next level does have one exception, but it's not that major. All right, so the death route was back there, but we have to go there last because we have to collect some boxes here still. The shield guy's yelling is funny, so feel free to laugh. Unlike an air crash, the death route here does also have boxes, so you actually have to go through this way to get both gems. Alright, hopefully I can nail this bonus. I'm gonna say check this out, assuming I do it perfect, so check this out. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. It's fine, fine. So good. About, that's about what you want right there, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean. Oh, man. 
I'm gonna be safe on this pit. I'm not gonna give him the chance. I'm okay. just gonna slide jump it. <laughs> Take your time. I'm not okay. Because if I die here, then I have to do the whole level again. So no thanks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was complete BS. But it was in my favor, so that means it's okay. We uh, take those. We are now in the death route, so we are safe. We can die, and everything is good. I'm gonna jump around that. Thanks. So we're going to use this shield guy, bounce on him, and get... I fixed oh. it there, right? <laughs> It's fine. It's, you can do it in the next level, yeah, too. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see it soon enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is also That's okay. Fine. Checkpoint is coming up. Yeah, we get a check here. Uh, this is fine. I'm not paying for it. Okay, it's Where am I? Okay. This is absolutely a nerve-wracking section of the run, especially if you're on PD phase. But we're done. You make one mistake and it's over. And no re-enter piston with a perfect bonus. That's perfectly fine with me. I will take that. Um, spaced out to the next stage. It's the it's like technically the final level, like level 25, and uh, the series tends to include a section with every colored gem, and it's like supposed to be like a final challenge. So this is also my friend Groovy's favorite level. He loves this level. Groovy's huge adventure. <laughs> Oh, man. So, up ahead we will see the blue gem, but we are actually going to pass it and come back. Yeah, he'll be breaking every box on his way, grab the first checkpoint, and then die to reset the cycles, and then go back to the multicolor gem path. Yep. So we cleared the way of enemies so we can get back and hopefully do this cycle. It's very, it's kind of cold. Okay, actually, I'm going to be completely honest. It's pretty cool, so. You got this. See if I can do it. Just like in Rumination, he died to reset the cycles, so he knows where everything is right now. Ah, I, I timed that a bit early, that's my bad. So we actually, I could explain this now. Uh, <laughs> I actually have to die right there again, because this is a weird quirk of the game, but you have to... On the second respawn, it's slower than normal. Only the second respawn, for some reason. But it actually matters in that section because you're too slow for the cycle if it, you get the slow respawn. So that's just a very niche thing that it, I don't know why it's a thing. It just is. But, you know, I'm glad I got to explain it. You know, so relining, whatever. <laughs> All right. So we're going to jump around this piston onto this disc. Ah, uh, okay. Spaced out, being a bit rough. That's fine. This level's not easy. I was like thinking about it. I was like, should I hold jump? But yeah, I shouldn't. But I will. You know, we'll get it. Trust. It'll happen. Big zigzags there to make those gaps. All right, final part here. Gonna take a big jump around this shield guy. All right. Okay. All right, I did it. There you go. Now the fun part of the level. <laughs> this part of the level, one of my favorite parts of the game. I really hope it goes well. We're gonna show off that thing I failed earlier too, so there you go. Bounce off this guy. Get up here. There, there you go. go. There you go. It's much shorter that time, but you still showed it off. Jump over this guy. We're gonna slide into the bonus from here. Jump around this guy. <laughs> then we are going to. I didn't die there. Okay, cool. Uh, blow up that TNT early, and now we're gonna do some spin dances again. Got it. Oh, nice. Oh, 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 oh. So this will line up for a perfect cycle if I move the way I should. This section is also very cool. Alright. And there you go. A bit rocky, but it's spaced out. Uh, this is pretty expected. Whatever. <laughs> uh, so the next stage is one of two jetpack stages, and this level has a frame-perfect trick. 
I could explain how it's pretty easy for a frame-perfect trick, but it'll be more impressive if I just do it. Basically, we're going to be sliding past the jetpack and then spamming pause and spin, trying to press spin on the right frame, and we can skip the jetpack. Got it. There Very you go. Gone. Nice. <laughs> Worth noting from this point on, uh, if Potty makes one critical mistake, the game would crash. Uh, specifically, if you get zapped by anything that does zap damage, the game will crash. And there's also like a couple points where if he just moves a little too fast, the game will crash as well. But it's still worth it. And once we get, once we figure out all those, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna dodge. I was, I was like, I'm gonna dodge that wire because it wasn't perfect. I was like, no thanks. Oh, yeah, once a runner has practiced all those, you know, dangerous points, it's a pretty consistent level. All right, smooth. So yeah, you're supposed to have the jetpack here if it wasn't obvious, uh, the floating boxes and whatnot. Oh no, okay, it's fine. All right, this is fine. All right, so we're gonna grab the crystal here and warp to the uh, magic watch. There you go, look at that. Very nice. How does he do it? <laughs> so there are actually triggers near the end of the jetpack levels where it crashes warped to the end. It just so happens that the crystal is right at the trigger, so you can grab it and then go to the end instantly. I didn't crash in packless. Great, that's a good job. Great, honestly. Uh, Night Fight is just a long, it's like totally fly, but longer, and it has a branching path. So we can do some donations as the run is wrapping up here, so we can fit a bunch in. Sure thing. I've got a $15 donation from Bulbazak that says, first time donating and choosing the best crash game to 100% to do so. You heard me. Congrats on destroying Cold Hard Crash, and good luck on the rest of the run. I've got a $25 donation from Mark that says, Hoi! I've got a $10 donation from Mr. Funkmaster that says, First donation of the week, more to come. Thanks to GDQ for all you do. Also got a $50 donation from Arrow that says, I've been waiting for SGDQ. So glad it's finally here. Looking forward to all the runs this week. Good luck to all of the runners. All right, so we're going to take a branching path here in reverse. There, it's like it's not designed to be done this way, but we're going to grab these fireflies and backtrack, which is, I'm sure a lot of people tried this and probably failed because it is challenging for sure. Going backwards, you know, in the dark, it's pretty evil design once again, but <laughs> oh well. They really made a level that's dark and has backtracking. Like, come on, you know. <laughs> But it was perfectly fine there, so we just have to march to the end. And then we have one more stage, and then that's when we do the final boss. We're almost done already. It feels like it's gone by so fast. Oh. So the final stage is a jetpack level, but we actually use the jetpack. So if I can, hopefully I like do it perfectly so you see how, like, the jetpack is cool in this game. A lot of people give it some slack, you know. They think it's like pretty bad controls and whatnot, which I'm not gonna say it's good, but it's, it's pretty fun. Come on, you know, it can be a fun time. Fast spawn? No, I'm not gonna. <laughs> All right, see if we can nail a uh, rocket here. It should be mentioned that Jetpack Loss is inefficient in this level due to the box formations being noticeably more difficult. And you cannot grab the crystal and warp till the end, unlike in back attack. Alright, going to graze this TNT to light it and then turn around. So far this is going perfectly. <laughs> Surely it will continue. We have to break that because if the nitros explode off screen, they will not break that box. So we have to, even though the nitros are near it. All right. And 
and then this part at the end is always scary. All right, wow. It was nice cooperative, cycle. very nice. That's pretty much like what you want out of Rocket. That was amazing. And that's the last stage. Now we just had the final boss. It's really hard, just so we're aware. <laughs> this boss is like half a minute long, so time is coming up. Time is on the final hit of Cortex. And I will count it down. Unless I, hopefully I don't miss. That would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't touch the controller, because you can crash the game if you do so in certain inputs. OK. So as a jetpack boss, we just spin him. There's a hit. <laughs> it's, this is the final boss, by the way. <laughs> Very simple. Get ready right. on time. Time is coming up. Three, two, one, time. <laughs> Let's go. 114.50. Sub 115 is what I wanted, so. Nice. Very good. Crash. This is absolutely what amazing. Happened to Cortex? And what about the Cortex Vortex? It's still, it's still up, up there. there. <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's Crash Bandicoot 2, 100%. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was, it was a lot of fun. I did way better than I thought I would. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mohef and Nitrowski, for being on my couch. I appreciate it. it Very good pleasure. commentary. Thank you for having us. Uh, thank you to my stream. Thanks, guys, so much. Uh, wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, so thank you guys so much. If you want to get into running this game, join the Discord. Uh, very helpful group of people there. Um, and I, I stream this game every day, except for right now, because I'm you know, playing out for the week with GDQ. But I am second place currently, and I could be going for world record in the future. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned, I suppose. But it's going to be it for me. I'm, I need to go to bed. <laughs> it's been a long day. But thank you guys once again for watching. Um, clap, I suppose. Uh, yeah. Keep donating. <laughs>
All right, we apologize for the extended delay. We're gonna have an interview now with Jay Hobbs and Bullets. Welcome back, folks. Thanks for bearing with us for a little bit there. Uh, my name is Jay Hobbs, and I am joined by what at this point is basically a GDQ tradition for me, <laughs> Bullets, or B, as we may uh, go with for the rest of the interview. Uh, B, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Like I said, this is basically a tradition because I met you uh, several GDQs ago, years ago, at a, like... 4 a.m. run or 5 a.m. or something where everybody had stayed up all night. I got, I think, pulled on to do commentary for your race of Lovely Planet, and uh, it was super fun, and just immediately it was like, oh, this is a nice, chill dude who's, uh, <laughs> just, you just love running a bunch of different games. Like, can, can you tell me about what draws you to, to various games? It's, it's fun looking through and just just kind of finding these games and, and looking around and just being like, hey, there's these these weird things that are out there that nobody's gone and routed, not a lot of people have played, and just going through and discovering kind of like what, what makes this game tick. Like, there's no roadmap at all. Nobody's done anything with it. There might not even be like a, a let's play or like a walkthrough for it anywhere. <laughs> right. Like, you have to figure that stuff out. There's certain games where it's getting 100% even in it to like find everything. It's... Mm. It's hard to do that even. So like going through and discovering stuff and figuring it out yourself and kind of like laying down that that um, plan for everything, that's really fun. Yeah, I, I totally agree because routing I think is a super like fun aspect of games. And you often end up playing a lot of kind of more linear level-based games sometimes, yeah. which you might not think of routing being an aspect of that, but it actually can be a lot. You want to talk a little bit about just like routing uh, a, like a platform or something like Super Dream Dash that you're going to be running soon. Yeah, by the way, this art by LOK is... It's fantastic. ...beautifully done. I want it framed. I want to feel <laughs> it after the interview. I won't... I probably won't. Anyways, so, <laughs> so for, like, these IL-based games, you don't have these huge skips where it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to skip the entire game. I'm going to go over this wall and do that. So you're looking within the levels for, like, kind of what's the intended path of it? What are these different ways I can go? So it's a lot of... It's, it's small things, and it's hard to kind of convey that with commentary when you're going through it, but there's yeah. all these little details, and especially like as you get more people into it, there's all these little details that people kind of donate to it, so it's mm -hmm. just these building blocks that all these different people are putting together, all these different little things you've tried out throughout it, so what can look like a simple run for ILs ends up turning into all these little things that have come together over time. Yeah, it really is. It's kind of like a, a microcosm of how a community routes the speed game in the first place, like, mm -hmm. a, like a full game run, but you feel it in the, like you're saying, the, the tenths of seconds and stuff, the, the, yeah. the, the small bits here and there that people are donating, and I, I think that's super cool. So we'll come back to uh, Super Dream Dasher in a second, but you're actually running two games at this marathon. Somehow. Somehow. <laughs> uh, so you love to just run, like we were talking about, a, a, a scattering, like just melting pot of different games, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, sometimes those games are quite awful or silly. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to tell us a little bit about Me Scoozy that is happening later in the week? So, so the pitch always for me, so this is going to be in the, the silly block, and the pitch for Me Scoozy always for me has been, if you know Untitled Goose Game, just imagine that, but instead of playing as a goose, you're playing as an Italian man, so... Um, you know, so. Yeah, you know, just imagine <laughs> that. Just that, that very normal, natural thing that yeah. all of us can imagine. Just Untitled Goose Game, but you're playing as an Italian man. Yeah. Tune yeah. in for that one. I think that's Thursday morning, if I'm uh, not mistaken. So that, that, <laughs> that'll be fun. But let's talk a little bit about Super Dream Dasher, because that's coming up just a couple runs from now and is something that I think a lot of people should tune in for because it is an extremely cool game when you're moving fast, but it's also something that a lot of people probably haven't heard of. So tell me about the game uh, in general and what drew you to it. So kind of similar to the time before, that's another IL-based game where uh, you're playing as this cute little river ball named Dwish, and you're dashing through all these different levels, and it's as fast as you can dash, as long uh, the skill ceiling is very high for it, so... Uh, as you're platforming through levels, you're just trying to dash it as much as possible to keep your speed as quick as possible. And, and there's a lot of different mechanics being added as you're going through a lot of different uh, switches. Like every five levels, you're getting something new, and, and usually there's more than that even. So mm -hmm. there's a whole variety of different stuff and just kind of... Uh, there's a lot of cycles as well to kind of keep track of and, and adjust to. So there's, there's a lot of different stuff going into it as you're going through it. But at the core, it's very simple. It, uh, with all, like doing all the dashes and just trying to 
to speed along and just just keep mashing as much as possible. Yeah. To break through. So at the core, it's simple, but then you just start layering stuff on top of it, and then it uh-huh. becomes the whole thing. So yeah, like sometimes I'll ask about you know what what's like one moment in this run people should tune in, for, in, tune in for or something. But I feel like with a game like Super Dream Dasher, it's not about the moment; it's about the core. Just what is that? That movement, that that just that core element of it, uh, that is going to mm-hmm. carry the entire game, right? Definitely. I mean, the boss fights are the, the third boss fight, especially as we're going through, is very challenging. But for the most part, it is really just the the entire kind of experience of it, the aesthetic of it, the art style of it, just the the sound design even of it, just everything with it comes together, and it's a really fun time. And I, I think people should give it a shot as well. Uh, it's actually on sale right now. I think it's like 50% Ooh. off. So, no, if you like it, <laughs> you want to speed run a game, you know, you could do that. <laughs> you should hop into the community. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely agree. I think that's that's super cool. Uh, but, yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I just uh, love this game. I think it's super cool. I love talking to you about all the various games that you do run. Uh, and I guess just last question, do you more prefer or, or enjoy running games that belong in the awful and silly blocks or games like Super Dream Dash or just these little small indie gems and stuff? Oh, it's challenging. It's like choosing between <laughs> your two children. I don't know if you can do that. Um, I like stuff that's kind of in the middle where it's like, it's a silly game. Like, you know, some part of it, like the story is like really silly or the aesthetic's really silly. Or like the idea behind it's really silly. Like, mm. you know, Italian man on Total Goose. <laughs> but at the, like... If you go past that, it's like, oh, this actually has some cool stuff. Like, you can you can do this different things to skip what you're supposed to do. So, like, you can get a mixture of that. Like, a lot of these awful or silly games that are in there, there's there's an underlying, like, oh, there's, like, actual tech to this. There's stuff going on. So if you can get a mixture of that, it's, like, a very, very fun run. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody, you should absolutely tune in to Super Dream Dasher. Bullets is going to be running that in just a couple runs. If you're looking for that late-night chill vibe, uh, maybe you're sitting in Room 104 and you want to watch it or something, uh, be sure to tune in for that. I'm going to throw it back to our host so we can get ready for our next run. Thanks, everybody. Thanks again, Bullets. Of course. All right, we are going to take one more short break before perspective. Stay tuned.